This is Erica, and I thank you for coming to my channel. I pray that you all are adhering to the stay home orders or shelter in place, and that you're finding something to do with yourself and with your family, because it's very important. I feel that the opening up of these states right now is really a big mistake because it is so much we don't know. A lot of our statistics are from the hospitals or doctor's offices, um, sending them stuff or urgent cares. But a lot of people still are being quarantined at home because they're not sick enough to be in the hospital. So a lot of times they're not going back to be uh, reassessed. And they um, some people just stay at home because they're afraid to go to the hospital. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of times you don't know who's got it. By the, a lot, when we get them at the hospital, they're short of breath, chest pain, and some, some may or may not have a temperature. So, we, it is still so much that we don't know. I do know that a lot of these figures that are going down, a lot of them is mainly because the hospitals, they have the little um, makeshift stations outside. So, a lot of, they're, they're really stringent, they're really tough with their assessment and letting you in that hospital. So number one, if you're not showing major symptoms, you're going home in quarantine. Even if you do have it, they want you to go home in quarantine so they can save those beds for people that need them. But um, I've, just, <laughs> I've seen people get fired and mad because they wouldn't admit them to the hospital. And uh, why you don't want to go and be around in your surroundings where they're safe, I don't know. Whether they're mild stages going home or they're very severe to the point of even being on a ventilator is, you know, I don't think I want to be near somebody on a ventilator, very, very contagious, or they the been through it, got off that vent, the been through it in that hospital a couple of days and they about to go out the door. So I, that means they're much, much better. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is if your mom got to go to that hospital with shortness of breath, you know, her stats not saying she's going to have to be admitted. I don't think you want your mom around somebody that's, all of them are contagious, but I get, I think it's kind of a degree of being contagious, you know, if a, a brand new person with a uh, coronavirus, highly contagious to the point of really going to the unit, that they're really contagious, as opposed to that person got the medicine, got their antibiotics, and did their little course, and their sats are starting to stay up, their oxygen level, I'm sorry, the oxygen level is staying high enough for them to be out of that unit, and they made it to a room, so they're in a regular room, starting to do better, breathing better, and even able to be off the oxygen. They, that's a big thing. A lot of people are going home on oxygen. So they're doing great and able to walk around and get around. And so the doctor retests them five or six days later. They're negative. Great, they're negative. So a lot of the hospital are actually uh, testing them twice. So they're negative and they're doing great. But I don't think you want mom to be with this person, highly contagious, looking like they're on death, death's door in the, in the unit, as opposed to her being by somebody that's fixing to go home, that went through the course. So they're doing much better. So that's all I'm saying about being at home in your own surroundings. So even in this, uh, I, they have said that some people can be, um, Re, uh, can uh, catch it again. I don't know. I, I don't know a lot of the, it's so much we still don't know. But uh, several people said uh, they, they were reinfected. So that's something on, uh, down the line that we're gonna find out. But I do know that we, as a whole, seeing these numbers to decrease, it's because so many people are doing what they're supposed to do. Um, the, but even in that, 
we still have to have the people, you know, that want to get on the beach and still want to go party and stuff and still not doing what they're supposed to do. Whether the beaches or the house parties, they're still being in big groups. And so when you got somebody that, that don't even know that they're infected, they're infecting several people around them. And so a lot of people just think they're shaking off a cold or something. Oh, I'm just really, God, I can't shake this. You might have the coronavirus and just didn't know it. Because a lot of people really, since they're saying this really started in February, whenever it really started, a lot of people, they're, they are second-guessing themselves, that thought they had the flu. You know, I probably had it. I probably had it. I probably had it. We don't know. You might did. We don't know. But see, that's what I'm saying. Just because you have these small numbers, it does not mean that we need to stop staying inside, that we just need to stop. They say that, um, well, um, when Florida opened their beaches on Friday, well, we're still gonna practice social distancing. Everybody is thinking like you. I've been cooped up in this house. It's time to go outside. Those beaches were full. They showed a picture of some people walking by each other a little distance apart. But you could even see in the back a big old group of people. <laughs> a big old group of people back there having a good time. So they were practicing uh, social distancing. So, y'all, we really got to take care of ourselves. We really got to um, take care of our families and our friends. Please encourage your friends to stay inside because this isn't over. I just think we're gonna be right back to square one. And it's gonna be worse because this time a lot of the hospitals got on it and they're very, they're very uh, meticulous to have a, a certain area, a certain hall designated to it. And they did make certain uh, halls. They made them, so of course they stopped surgeries and stuff. So they had areas to make into units to handle that influx of uh, uh, unit beds that they needed with, for those ventilators and everything. But uh, if it comes about again, and you got this big influx of people coming in day after day, really, really sick, they're not gonna be able to handle it. These, even these big hospitals, it's gonna be a big strain on the healthcare system. And to tell you the truth, it's, it's, it's so heart, it's heart-wrenching for us to see this every day. Like I say, I do work on a COVID hall. And for all y'all young folks that want to party and we're tired of this and all, I'm doing okay, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of staying in this house, shame on y'all. Y'all want to be sick, be sick. Y'all don't care. You need to think about your parents. A lot of y'all have aunties and uncles and moms and grandma. A lot of people have the, uh, some of these underlying diseases that they're saying that helps it alone that don't, don't get them that full capacity to fight as hard. So you're, you're hurting them. That's who you're hurting. You, you, your immune system might be okay to withstand this. And I'm glad for you. But that's not fair to do that to your family. And if you do that and go out and get that disease, shame on you. But you know what? You don't need to come to that hospital whining to us. I hate to sound like that, but it's true. So we have to sit here and watch these people day in and day out, can't see their family members, can't, they can't touch them, they can't hold them. I'm talking parents can't see their kids. I mean, this, this stuff real. So, I mean, to y'all that's, that's got your, uh, your own room in your house, most, most families now, uh, most families, we don't have these big families anymore. <laughs> so, most families have, uh, most uh, children have their own room. So just think if you shut up in that room on quarantine. So just go ahead on quarantine, quarantine yourself, uh, let's say six hours. You, we can just try this, for six hours. Stay in your room. Um, we do want you to put a mask on and run to the bathroom because usually um, you don't have a bathroom in your room. So you got a TV. Most of these kids got the Game Boy or 
I don't forgot all the Nintendo little things to watch TV that's hooked up. So you got plenty of do, plenty to do, and a computer, a laptop. So we're gonna say you're a teenager, we, these young folks, your twenties, you got a little, a little everything in that room, everything for you. You can FaceTime with your friends and everything. So, um, so why don't you try for six hours for me today? A lot of people still go stir crazy. You know, uh, I'm not gonna do this crap. No, you're not. But if you are sick, just think of you being in that um, hospital bed all day. Those people have to see us with a bonnet on, our shields on. A lot of people got the uh, eye thing or the uh, shield, the plastic shield over our mask. A lot of, most of us are double and triple mask in our uh, gowns. So they don't see pictures of us. They don't get to see us like y'all see us. They see us suited down and in this space suit, whatever they want to call it. And that's how they see. We go in and give them medicine. Uh, can I get you anything else? We're gone. I'm going back in that room again to help you to the bathroom because uh, a lot of them are so weak. But I'm gone the time I get through because of exposure. Those people don't have any, they don't have their family members to touch them, to laugh. Y'all watch a funny TV to, to, uh, uh, sitcom together. Nobody to sit there and laugh with them, touch them and hold their hand. And the ones that's really bad off, they're dying alone. I was blessed to um, talk to my friend who just got home. And she um, she told me, she said, uh, Erica, uh, it's really bad. I don't know why these people don't wanna listen. And she told me, uh, I'm sorry. She said, I just want to give up. I'm sorry. And even listening to her, I was very surprised even going through that because of the love she had for her children and her grandchildren. And she said, had me so bad off, I wanted to give up. Uh, I had a couple of people, a uh, couple of my patients say that. And, you know, all I can say through that mask is, no, you, uh, you don't want to do that. But this virus has people to that point. It has them thinking, I want to give up. I don't want to fight no more. I don't want to do this no more. And to be there in that position, knowing your child, your mom, your dad can't come see you, I know that's got to be in your mind. So yes, I think it's too soon to open up these cities right now. It is entirely too soon. To y'all that have that phone on Facebook, that's still getting around to see your family, can make a phone call, please ask these people to stay inside. I have a girlfriend that has a daycare. They feel that it's they, May 1st or so. She said, she called, she asked it, uh, if, it's, if I think it's too soon. I said, yeah. And uh, she, But she has a, a, a home daycare. So I think the max they have is six children. Um, in, uh, in our state, it's six children. At one point, I don't know. I'm sorry. If I got it wrong, I'm sorry. But she has a small daycare. And she said something about May the 3rd, the first week of May. 
And I said, um, yes, I think it's too soon. But, and I know, you know, she's gonna take the precaution and clean and everything and do what she needs to do. But uh, if y'all can stay home, take some kind of time off, take some leave, please stay home, y'all. Because uh, I've made videos begging and stuff, and I got to keep begging. And I'm telling you, I don't wanna see y'all in that hospital. And I sure as hell don't wanna see you on an event. Because most people, we've been having success, and some people depend on uh, the, le the level of their immune system, they've been going home. And I'm glad for them. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I am so glad for them. But a lot of times, when they get, when they're sick enough to be on that ventilator, they're not coming back. And um, a lot of the nurses have to tell their family members. I haven't had to do it. Um, recently, we had a death of a lady. Um, she died within uh, about five hours of being on our hall. She wasn't but 52. Um, and the nurse called and can hear him in the background screaming. made one of those phone calls and uh, I'm truly glad I haven't had to make one of those phone calls um, I have had uh, family members call me and I've had to give them status reports and it's very generic uh, it's, I mean, it's not very generic but it's you know even let them know if mom or dad is eating because uh, sometimes they're not and and you know they're doing okay but mentally mentally they're not um and you can't their their family they're away from their family from people they know and they can't see them so this is it's taking a very big toll on everybody and the patients the worst but even though they say you can go out, you can go out to the, I think they said, <laughs> they initially, I think they said they're gonna open the beauty salons, the barber shops, the gyms, all the, I mean, all these places got people just by each other, a lot of people. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe the gyms are gonna do like every other treadmill or something, every other equipment thing, but these people still going to be by each other. So I'm just saying, y'all, please, if you're able to stay home, please stay home. If you give yourself a week or two, just um, I just think that will really help things because I just don't think we're, we're there yet. And I think the officials, they'll look, I understand being broke. I, uh, I am a nurse and I'm a broke nurse. I mean, I pay my bills. I don't have, I think my savings account got $47 in it. And I mean, I know I, I have to go to work every day. And that's when, you know, my, my, my grandkids sneeze. Oh, you get away from me. Cause your grandma cannot be sick. You can ask them. Cause I, I gotta go to work. Um, so I'm telling you, Things are hard, but it's gonna get better. But we need a little longer. It's gonna get better. Y'all, it's really too soon. And I just think the officials are just jumping the gun right now. I do give credit to uh, our governor, Kay Ivey. She, uh, she said she wants to see a little more testing. She said she's going to stick to her original date because um, this, uh, she really don't, the numbers aren't where they should be. And she wants to see how things pan out. 
whereas our, our mayor, uh, uh, Sandy Stinson, he feel that we should be easing into things because uh, he wants the economy to be coming on back along because we got to get started somewhere. But her as governor, I still believe probably May 1st, we will be opening, whether she do a little here and a little there. But uh, because of who she is, I really think we will be opening. But I do applaud her for going to the 30th, like she said she was going to do. So, but y'all, please, please, <laughs> y'all, please stay inside of the kid. I know I'm one person, and some of you might not like me, or a lot of people don't believe it. And I understand that the president this, the president that, baby, a lot of stuff he say is not on, uh, based on science. It's based on money. I'm sorry to say that. Y'all see, he don't want to listen to nobody. But at least try to keep your family safe. If you can stay off, please stay off as long as possible. Thank you for coming, and I appreciate you listening to me. And um, y'all have a great day, and please stay safe. Uh, what do you call it? Mm, I forgot what you call it. Damn. Stop. I gotta go to work every day. <laughs>